Hi, um, we're here at Computex 2013. I'm standing next to Tom Cruise. I'm standing um, next to Roman. <laughs> Hi, Tom. And um, you're standing in front of the G-Skill booth. So how's the day going, Peter? Uh, I think it's going very well. Everyone looks very tired. That means that a lot of results have been achieved. We're here with uh, Duck san and Fred, uh, Fred Yamasan from Japan, uh, Eight Pack from the UK, Christian Ney from Switzerland, Hiwa from Switzerland, Roman from I don't know. He's not really that important. <laughs> Behind the camera, there's also, also a Shamino from uh, from Singapore. So a lot of a lot of big people here, a lot of legends here. So Computex this year was very interesting for overclockers because we had a lot of overclocking events, um, as as any any year and every big trade show. G-Skill had their week of overclocking at the booth at Nangang, and then um, Asrock had their booth as well. We had a booth uh, for Galaxy, and there was a couple of uh, post-Computex gatherings at Gigabyte, at MSI, and Asus. The G-Skill one is um, traditionally with uh, Young Pro and Hiwa as main overclockers, uh, as well as Fred Yama from, from Japan. And this year, we also had uh, Christian Ney doing the memory overclocking results. Next to um, the, the, the core overclockers uh, that were flown in by G-Skill, every day there's a new uh, mainboard vendor and they all, they all have their own overclockers joining in as well. So we saw Elmore for MSI, we saw Shimino for Asus, we saw Kingpin and Tin for EVJ, and then eventually Haikuki and Dinos 22 for Gigabyte. The idea was basically to have as much records broken as possible on stage during Computex. Uh, and for that, the overclockers had an entire day to, to test and to break the records. The most impressive show of the G-Skill booth was, um, was probably the one of EVJ, who had a four-way SLI GTX Titan setup running. And it was LN2 smokes and fumes coming everywhere when they were running uh, full load. And they broke two world records as well. But especially from a, from a spectator point of view, that was a very, very nice show. Very impressive, very, yeah, very impressive. So the G-Scale booth was mainly a hangout place for all the overclockers when they came in uh, Nangang in the morning or in the afternoon. Everyone just went to the G-Scale booth and then started out from there to explore the rest of the Computex venue. At the ASRock booth, we had uh, John Lam, uh, Splave, and Nixie trying to break uh, memory overclocking records and focusing on mainly Super Pi 32M with Haswell CPUs. Yeah, we saw that they had some, um, like, be they were binning the memory chip. Uh, can you tell us more about that? That was at uh, Avexir booth. So Avexir had, um, had brought some R&D tools to bin memory chips. So they had basically IC uh, trays with uh, memory ICs. And you could just put uh, eight of them on a memory stick and then test how well they were going. So a bunch of overclockers went home with uh, specially binned memory chips. MSI had an overclocking booth at the Nangang venue as well, where Elmore and then um, the guys from Jagat Review did uh, some overclocking sessions, overclocking demo, and after the Computex um, event, after Computex, they also had an OC gathering in their headquarters. The goal for the MSI OC gathering was more to have extreme overclockers play with their uh, Z87 M Power and X Power motherboards. Um, we had Sozolio from Denmark, uh, the guys from Belgium, Gamer and Lehoft. We had um, Roman from, from Germany, and then also uh, um, Lucky Noob and uh, Coldest from Jagger Review joining. And we also had a, a very nice uh, coverage article by, uh, by Dennis from Ninja Lane. MSI provided uh, most of the hardware, such as uh, GDX 77 uh, Lightnings, um, and the idea was basically play with the hardware give some feedback. Uh, in the end, at the end of the day, they also brought in a couple of engineers to talk about new BIOS uh, fixes, uh, features, and so on. So it, not, it was not really relaxing, but it was also not about breaking records. It was something in between. You had a day to just play with the MSI hardware, and then they, they wanted to listen to your feedback. Galaxy had just uh, an overclocking booth at the Computex venue. Um, you had on the first day the guys from HKPC together with uh, Duck San from Japan and then later on the week uh, we also saw the guys from NP2 Korea Pro C team, Little Boy and, and Windforce uh, attack the GDX 780 uh, Hall of Fame graphics cards. So Corsair and Intel together did uh, an overclocking OC main event the day before Computex and essentially it was the, the biggest prize pot in terms of cash. 
that overclocking has ever seen. It was 20,000 USD worth of uh, prize money at the event. Um, you had vendor employees competing against each other, Hai Kuki versus Nick Shea for, versus Andre Yang uh, versus Elmore. And um, in the end, Andre and Asus kind of dominated the competition winning 10 out of the 11 stages. And then the other one, the memory overclocking stage went to uh, Gigabyte, High Cookie and Dino's 22. There was a lot of overclockers there. Um, you had PT1T from Belgium, Hassan, Zolkorn, the guys from Jagged Review, uh, and a whole bunch of other overclockers that attended that event. The judges for the competition were um, Jake Crimmins from Corsair, Mike Moen from Intel, and then Peter from hwbot.org. Most of the overclockers that attended the post Computex workshops were um, were most happy about the Gigabyte OC gathering. It was the sa Saturday and Sunday after Computex, and the idea was very very simple. Um, Gigabyte would provide hardware, CPUs, motherboards, power supplies, and then provide LN2, some pizza, some drinks, and then you could just have fun all weekend long. It was essentially just an overclocker gathering, no stress, no pushing for records, just overclockers doing overclocking, having fun. The main highlight for the Gigabyte OC lab was probably hitting 7 GHz validation with a QEH6 CPU, an engineering sample CPU. Um, they, they almost got the SuperPy 32M record, but they could just not get the memory stable enough to, to get it there. The official OC day for ASUS was Monday and Tuesday, but they actually started from Saturday and went all the way to Thursday, I think. Um, essentially, it was a small meeting room where, uh, where Andre and uh, Peter Shamino were uh, providing hardware, all the crazy CPUs and motherboards and graphics cards you can use to just have fun with the, with the boards. Uh, in the end, they had a lot of very, very high results, a lot of world records at the event. Computex 2013 was a significant milestone for the overclocking community on HWBot because we saw over 50 overclockers present at the single event, which is probably the largest gathering um, outside the GoC and MOA overclocking events. And that makes me very hopeful for the future. Uh, it's very interesting to see so many vendors interested in overclocking and overclockers as well, especially with the post Computex events. It's very good to see uh, companies just allow overclockers to do what they want. They just provide the LN2, the hardware and the pizza and the beers. That's the best the, the vendors can get from, from overclockers. Just let them do their thing and then you'll, you'll see the return long term. <laughs>